Hey guys, in this video, I'll be showing you nine tips and tricks that you can start using in Civil 3D today. Let's open up Civil 3D and let's get started. So number one, we have the quick profile tool. So as you can see here, I have an existing surface and if I open it up in the object viewer, you can see that this is what it looks like. To create a quick profile, all you need to do is draw a polyline first. So now I have drawn my polyline and if I click on the polyline and right click, then I select quick profile. You can see that Civil 3D has opened up this dialog box for me. The existing ground level surface has been selected here. And here I'll just change the style to ANZ one times exaggeration. And I'm using the Australian and New Zealand country kit, which you can find in the description of this video. And that gives you these preset profile view styles and I'm gonna click OK. And now I'm gonna select the profile view origin. And if I move it slightly over, you can see that a simple profile view of the existing surface has been created. And this is a handy tool to create a quick profile of your surface if you don't want to create an entire profile view from scratch. Number two is the station tracker. So here you can see that I've created an alignment and I've also created a profile view. And a really useful tool that I use all the time is the station tracker. So if I click on the profile view and I come here to station tracker and select all viewports, you can see that Civil 3D shows this blue line for me and it indicates where I am along my alignment as I hover over the profile view. And I can do the same thing when I'm hovering over the alignment and Civil 3D will show me where I am in the profile view. Number three is the swap edges tool. So here you can see I've zoomed up on my existing surface and you can see that this contour doesn't look right as this edge of the triangle should actually be along this edge. So we can actually fix this by clicking on the surface coming here to edit surface and clicking on swap edge. Then I'm going to select this edge and you can see that the edge has been swapped and the contour has straightened out. And using this tool is a great way to smoothen out any rough spots in your contours. Number four is projecting crossing surfaces. So here you can see I've created an existing alignment and I've also created a profile view for that alignment. You can see that I've drawn this green pipe here and projected it onto my alignment. I've also shown a crossing surface here, which is this white pipe here that is crossing our green pipe. So I'll just delete this crossing surface for now and I'll show you how to draw it onto the profile view. So firstly, we need to select the profile view, go to profile view properties, then click on show only crossing pipes. And you can see that the white pipe is network 5P5 and we're going to draw it to show it as a crossing service in our profile view. And I'm going to click OK. And you can see the white pipe has been drawn on our profile view. However, it doesn't look correct. So what we can do is go back to the profile view properties. And we can override its style to make it display correctly. And I'm gonna select the ANZ crossing service style. And to use the style, you can download the Australia and New Zealand country kit, which I've included in the description of this video. You can also check out my other video on my YouTube channel that shows you how to model crossing services. And I'm going to click OK. And you can see now that the crossing service is now displaying correctly. Number five is fixing surface holes. So here you can see that there's a hole in our surface and this is a common bug in Civil 3D. An easy way to fix these holes in surfaces is to click on the surface and add a point where the hole is. Before we can edit points on our surface, we first need to make sure that points have been turned on in our surface style. So if I click on the surface and come here to edit surface style, Civil 3D will open up this dialog box for me and I'm in the display tab and I'm going to turn on the points component and I'm going to click OK and you can see that Civil 3D has now turned on the points for me. Now I can edit my surface. To fix this hole, I'm going to add a point at the location of the hole. So I'm going to come here to edit surface, click on add point and I'm going to assign a arbitrary elevation such as 20 and you can see now that the hole has disappeared. However, you can see that the elevation that we entered is obviously incorrect. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to delete that point. So I'm going to come here, delete the point, 
and I'm going to select the point. And you can see now that the point has been deleted and also it has fixed the hole in the surface. And so this is just a quick trick to fix any holes in your surfaces. Number six is creating split profile views. Sometimes we'd like to create split profile views when our profile view may be too long and we'd like to cut it into smaller sections so that we can fit it on our base plans for instance. So this is actually really simple to achieve. So here you can see that my profile view has a change up to about 59. So I could split this into two profile views by having one with change from 0 to 30 and another profile view that has changed from 30 to 59. So if I click on this profile view and I go to profile view properties, then I come here to stations and instead of automatic, I'm going to select user specified range and I'm going to enter a value of 30 here. And you can see that my profile view has been reduced to change 30. And so now we can create our second profile view by clicking on the alignment. Coming here to profile view and I'll just create a profile view with one times vertical exaggeration and I'm going to click on create profile view and select the origin and I'm going to do the same thing by manually adjusting the station. And here I'm going to enter 30 for the start station and the end station is simply going to be the end of the alignment. And I'm going to click OK. And you can see our split profile views have been created. Number seven is extracting contours from surfaces. So here you can see that the surface has multiple contours and we'd like to extract them as polylines. There's a really simple tool to allow us to do this in Civil 3D. So if we just click on the surface and we click on extract from surface, then we select extract objects. You can see that I can now choose the objects that I'd like to extract from the surface. And in this video, I'm just going to select the major contours and I'm going to turn everything else off. And I'm going to click OK. And now you can see that Civil 3D has extracted the major contours for me from the surface. Number eight is fixing gray triangles and feature lines. So if I come to this feature line here in Civil 3D and I click on the elevation editor, you can see that there's some weird gray triangles here. And if I select them, you can see that the elevation has been grayed out and I can't actually edit it like I can for these other ones here. And this one actually took me a really long time to figure out and I was super confused for a really long time. But basically, these gray triangles, but basically these gray triangles are created when you have two feature lines on the same side and they're crossing each other. So you can see that here, this feature line is crossing this feature line at this point and this point here, which is why two gray triangles are being created. So you can see that if I go to this gray triangle, it's showing this crossing and this gray triangle is showing this crossing. Personally, I don't really like these gray triangles showing up on my feature line elevation editor. I try to avoid crossings in feature lines just so that I can have more control over the elevation editor. So to fix this issue, all you need to do is move the feature lines so that they're not crossing other feature lines on the same side. And you can see that the gray triangles have been removed. You can also fix this problem by making sure that your feature lines are on different sides and you won't have this problem. Number nine is editing spot elevation labels. Here you can see that I've added a spot elevation label to my surface, and you can do this by clicking on the surface, coming here to add labels, and clicking on spot elevations, and selecting a point on the surface. And that's how you add a spot elevation. However, a lot of times the spot elevation label will be too big, if you need to zoom in to a section of the surface for some detailed work, then having these massive spot elevation labels really isn't going to help you. So 
To change the size of these spot elevation labels, you can click on the label and I'm just gonna drag the property. And if you come here to this property here, the elevation label style and click on it and come here to create slash edit, you can edit the style of the elevation label and you can make it smaller or larger or customize it however you want. So here you can see I have a bunch of properties that I can customize and there's also a preview of what my label looks like after I apply the changes. So let's say I'd like to reduce the text height to, to 1.5 millimeters. And you can see that the text size has reduced. And if I hit OK, you can see that you can see that the spot elevation label size has decreased, which is exactly what we want. We can also change the style of the marker here. So if we click on the label again, we can change the marker style by coming to here. And I'm using the Australia and New Zealand country kit, which I've linked in the description of this video, and it has provided some default styles. But let's say today we just want to make the marker a circle. So I'll just select this one, and you can see that the marker has changed to a circle. So yeah, that's it for this video, and I hope this video was useful to you, and thank you for watching.